Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Megan Imerowitz? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Megan Joyce Imerowitz was born in 2003. A few days after her birth, she was adopted by a married couple named Conrad and Julie. The couple had adopted a son named Austin the year before. The family lived in Ortonville, Michigan, which is about an hour north of Detroit. After adopting Megan, Conrad and Julie went on to have two biological children. In December 2010, Megan's parents separated. Julie moved out of the family house. They divorced in May of 2011. For several years, Megan primarily lived with her mother. In 2019, Megan decided that she wanted to live with Conrad instead. It would appear as though Conrad did not have a lot of rules. Perhaps this played a part in her decision. Conrad had difficulty regulating his intake of alcohol and did not function very well. The family house was an absolute disaster and there was trash everywhere. There was a one-foot-wide path through the trash to the living room couch where Conrad would spend much of his time. The basement of the house smelled like cat urine and feces. There was also some human excrement in atypical locations, presumably produced by Conrad. In addition to all these problems, the house had fleas. Conrad engaged in chemical warfare against the fleas in the form of a bug bomb, but the insect invaders persisted. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On October 1, 2021, at about 10.30 a.m., Megan asked her 64-year-old father, Conrad, to drive her to an appointment at a hair salon. This was to prepare for her 18th birthday party, which was being held later that day at a hotel. I imagine that the hotel venue was selected instead of the family house to avoid a flea circus. Conrad told Megan that he was intoxicated and therefore unable to drive her to the salon. In a fit of anger, Megan threw various items at Conrad as he was on the couch in the living room. She eventually found a friend to take her to the appointment at the hair salon. After finishing at the salon, Megan went to the hotel for her birthday party. At about 3.47 p.m., Megan called a friend of hers named Kayla. She asked Kayla to stop by her house and get credit card information from her father, Conrad. Megan was trying to pay for the hotel but was having some problems with the credit card. Kayla arrived at the family house not long after this. She did not remember when, but it was probably sometime around 4.15 p.m. Kayla was a friend of the family and very familiar with the house. She walked in the front door as she normally would have. When she found Conrad on the living room couch, it was clear that he had been injured. Kayla didn't know what happened to him, but she knew something was wrong. Around this time, Megan called Kayla and asked for the credit card information. Before Kayla could explain what she was seeing, the call ended. A few moments later, Megan called again. This time, Kayla told Megan that something was wrong with her father. Megan laughed upon hearing this. Kayla stressed that it was serious. Megan advised her to call Austin. Again, Austin is Megan's brother. Kayla called Austin and explained the situation. He told her to call 911, which she did. Conrad was transported to a hospital after first responders found him with chemical burns over 40% of his body. His blood alcohol level was 0.255%. Conrad was not sure what happened to him on the living room couch. He mentioned how he had set off a bug bomb to kill fleas. He thought that maybe those chemicals had burned him. Later, he told his son Austin that he believed Megan threw something on him. A nurse who treated Conrad notified the police and told them what Conrad said. In Conrad's house, the police found a bottle of lye on the living room couch. The term lye typically refers to sodium hydroxide, but it has also been used to refer to potassium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a corrosive chemical that has several uses. For example, it is used to make soap, to dissolve animal carcasses, and used in various cleaning products like oven and drain cleaners. It is an extremely dangerous chemical. 
The police believed that the chemical lye is what caused the burns to Conrad. They did not believe that he covered himself with the chemical, but rather he was the victim of a crime. Conrad's daughter Megan was the obvious suspect because she had been in an argument with him on the same day that he was burned. Essentially, the police were arguing that Megan gave new meaning to the phrase, you made your bed, now lie in it. The police tracked Megan's cell phone and found her at the hotel attending her birthday party. Megan told the police that during the argument with her father, she threw a bag of bread at him to wake him up. She mentioned this before the police ever said anything about objects being thrown at Conrad. Later in the interview, Megan mentioned throwing other items, including water. The police asked her if any white substance ended up on her father. She replied, I think so, yeah. When she described where the white powder was, it did not match the burns on Conrad, but the police still believed that Megan had harmed him. The police thought that Megan mixed lye powder with water and threw it on Conrad when he was intoxicated and unconscious. She was charged in connection with causing harm to her father. Conrad did not do well in the hospital. He had skin grafts, kidney dialysis, multiple infections, and both his legs were amputated. On March 3, 2022, several months after being burned, Conrad was released to hospice care. Three days later, on March 6, Conrad died. Medical professionals determined that he died due to chemical burns and complications. His death resulted in Megan getting an upgrade to her charges. Megan went to trial in June of 2023. She was found guilty of unlawful possession or use of harmful devices slash irritants causing death. This is a felony punishable by up to life in prison. She was also convicted of domestic violence, a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail. At her sentencing, Megan said her father was a hero, storyteller, the tooth fairy, and her best friend. She recited a passage from the Bible saying, quote, The evil are ensnared by the transgressions of their lips, but the righteous escape from trouble. Unquote. She told the judge, quote, The prosecution has tried to make me look like a monster, but that's not me and never was." Unquote. Ultimately, the judge did not believe that Megan understood the consequences of throwing the chemical on her father. Megan was sentenced to one year in prison and five years of probation. She was released immediately from prison because she had accumulated 506 days of time served. Her probation was described as intensive. It featured a mental health assessment, substance use testing, a review six months into her probation, her participation in a high school or GED program, a curfew of 9 p.m., and Megan must wear an electronic tracking device. Now moving to my analysis. The case of Megan Immeritz has caused a lot of controversy. Some people believe that she should have been sentenced to many years in prison. For example, the state was disappointed that her sentence was not longer. Other people believe that she was not guilty and should have never been charged. Before taking a look at the evidence in this case, I want to talk for a moment about the felony charge of which Megan was convicted. Again, the name of the charge was unlawful possession or use of harmful devices slash irritants causing death. This charge is different than murder. A person is guilty of this charge if they possess, place, or release a chemical to frighten, terrorize, intimidate, threaten, harass, injure, assault, battery, or kill, and the chemical caused the death of the victim. Megan could have intended to do any of those actions and still have been found guilty. An intent to kill is just one of the many options. It is not required for a conviction. With this in mind, let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Megan was guilty of this charge, starting with the inculpatory factors. It is unlikely that Conrad would have covered himself in lie mostly because of the chemical burning part. Conrad was intoxicated when the lie was placed on him, and he may have even been unconscious. Megan's friend, Kayla, said that Megan laughed after hearing about Conrad's injuries. This makes Megan seem cold and callous. She did not seem concerned about her father, but she was very concerned about getting his credit card information. When the police questioned Megan, she indicated that she threw a white substance on him, Megan knew that lye was used for cleaning trains. She knew, or should have known, that it was dangerous. 
the container of lye was clearly marked as hazardous. Allegedly, Conrad told people in the hospital that Megan must have been the one who threw the chemical on him. Moving to the exculpatory factors, it was technically possible that Conrad poured the lie on himself, perhaps because he was intoxicated and had no idea what he was doing. Maybe Megan threw the bottle at him, but he actually poured it out and mixed it with water. After he was burned, Conrad watched a movie and continued to drink. This does not seem consistent with the behavior of someone who was attacked. How did Conrad know who threw the chemical on him if he was intoxicated and unconscious when it happened? There was no mention in Conrad's medical records of him implicating Megan in the chemical burning. Did the nurse really hear Conrad implicate Megan, or did the nurse hear this allegation from other people who spoke to Conrad? Conrad told his ex-wife, Julie, that he did not know what happened to him. Why would he have told some people that Megan burned him and told other people that he had no idea how he became burned? Megan may not have known the capabilities of the chemical lie. Maybe she believed that she was just throwing another harmless item at her father. Even though intent to kill is not required for a conviction, if Megan had intended for her father to die, why did she send a friend over to get credit card information from Conrad? One could argue that she was trying to have someone else discover her father to distance herself from the crime. However, Megan was highly interested in the actual credit card numbers. The police conducted a poor investigation. During the interview of Megan, standing in front of a police cruiser at a birthday party, the police introduced the idea of a white substance. That information did not come from Megan. It is reasonable to believe that Megan was intimidated by these officers and just telling them what they wanted to hear. Megan left the family house sometime around 10.30 a.m., yet Kayla did not arrive until around 4.15 p.m. It's possible that someone else threw the lie on Conrad. Any number of people could have accessed the house and carried out the attack. When considering all the evidence, do I believe that Megan was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, based on the way this particular charge is defined, I am convinced that she was guilty. Megan essentially confessed to throwing a white substance on her father. I do not believe she intended to kill him, but rather intended to injure or harass him. Without her confession, there would be reasonable doubt as to her guilt. Moving to the next question, do I believe that Megan's sentence was fair? Her sentence is probably the most controversial part of this case. She did something that caused the death of her father, which is very serious, on the other hand, it seems clear that she was not trying to murder him. In my opinion, the judge made the right decision in this case. Megan was not a hardened killer. She was an impulsive young woman who made a mistake. Keeping her in prison for a long time would not be in the interest of justice. Conrad's death was caused through an unfortunate collection of circumstances. For example, Megan's anger, her access to a dangerous chemical, Conrad's intoxication, and his severely compromised medical status. Now moving to my final thoughts. This case illustrates the dangers of excessive alcohol consumption. Conrad did not deserve to die, but he certainly took risks that made dying a lot easier. When people get addicted to alcohol, they become oblivious to the outside world. Nothing mattered to Conrad except drinking. Even when he was covered in lye, he continued to drink. Conrad's substance use probably contributed to Megan's self-centeredness and her indifference toward him. She may have viewed him as living a lie. Ironically, the chemical that Megan used to burn her father has been used by various serial killers throughout the years to dispose of bodies. This could reveal what Megan actually thought about her father. From her point of view, he was already dead. Those are my thoughts on the case of Megan Imerowitz, Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.